Yo guys, what is up, this is Nick? We are back, and we are here to break down the Christmas slate. Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope uh, if you... I had a little bit of a celebration last night with family on Christmas Eve. I guess it's tonight, because it's 1.30 a.m., uh, but depending on when this you watch this, it may be, <laughs> may be Christmas. You may have woken up for Christmas. Uh, and so... Uh, I will have Christmas number three tomorrow, or today, on Christmas Day, and then I'll rock Christmas four on Wednesday to wrap it all up in the Christmas. The Christmas season will be pretty much over, but uh, we've got an NBA slate today, five games. Uh, we got 76ers, Knicks, Cavs, Warriors, Wizards, Celtics, Rockets, Thunder, and Timberwolves, Lakers from L.A., so, uh, let me update you a little bit with contests. I had a really nice day at NFL with one line, not so great the other one, but I won a bunch of tickets. So look forward to a lot to some uh, extra research at MMA. I have 10 tickets into the $10, and I also got a ticket into the 333, which I'm super hyped about. Um, I'll probably I'll probably lay a dud this weekend <laughs> with the th with me being in the 333, but uh, it'll be fun just to be in the contest just to see if I what what I can do. Maybe I can put up something huge, um, come up clutch. I I know the top prize on the 333 is only like five thousand dollars. It's it's not that great for a 333 dollar contest, but we'll let it ride. See if we can do something big in there. Uh, I also have an 88 dollar entry in tomorrow's M or NBA. Uh, into the it'll be the 26th NBA contest I have 34 entries into the eight dollar for this slate I don't know what I'm going to do with the 34 entries but uh, I worked hard to get those entry those tickets so we have 34 essentially not free rolls but 30 uh, I think it comes up to like 272 dollars is what it's worth um, I probably paid like 60 to get in so hopefully I can do something big tomorrow I'm not sure if I'm gonna just roll one lineup 34 one lineup entries into it and just let it ride out or not um probably not playing too much tomorrow most be playing uh gpps just because uh the randomness of such a small slate i think that's about it on the ticket front um i have two entries into the 80th millimaker, maker so 80 dollar entries into that as well as one I, I have some other tickets as well but let's get into breaking down the slate i thought i'd up you guys on a little bit of that and just how everything's going. So let's get into some injury news. I'm going to break it down this way. So Draymond Green, not on the injury report for Monday. We have uh, Curry, who is out still. That was, you know, we already knew that. Uh, Zaza and Kevin Looney are probable, along with Sean Livingston. Lonzo Ball is out at least a week, so he's out tomorrow. Clint Capella is questionable for um, Christmas. I'm just going to say Christmas because I don't know when you're watching this. Technically, it's today my time. I'll just say, okay. So, Brandon Ingram, Ingram is questionable. Chris Paul is doubtful. Uh, and I think that's, uh, Shane Larkin probable. Nobody cares. Semi Ojale is doubtful. Still no one cares. Marcus Morris is questionable. JJ Reddick questionable. Joel Embiid questionable. Kylo Quinn probable. Uh, is that it? That might be it. Yeah, that's going to be it on the injury front. So let's hop into the analysis. So let's start off with the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, J.J. Redick, the big one, I expect Joel Embiid to play. I'm not going to play Embiid, but I expect him to play, which kind of knocks everybody else. If J.J. Redick is out, I'll probably roll some Jared Bayless or T.J. McConnell. Uh, Redick has been out. McConnell saw a little bit. He, it's not any boost. He's not seeing any boost, but... Uh, there is boost to some shots, so J.J. Redick is out. Uh, probably look to play Bayless a little bit uh, because with J.J. Redick out, you're going to get 18. You're going to get in like the 12 range for extra shots to go around, uh, so keep that in mind with him out. Uh, I might go back to Bob Covington. He's only 6,100, uh, and it'll probably he'll probably be the one that uh, that I go to. Um, not entirely sure quite yet, but, uh, probably go to Bob Covington, who see, who should see 16 to 19. Sh These five shots are kind of, they bother me, because if I get a five-shot game from him, it's going to be nightmares, but, um, I'm going to hope I get the 16 shots, uh, at least double-digit shots, and we'll roll from there. That's about all the inf interest I have on the, uh, 76ers side, unless Embiid is out, 
then obviously we like Sarich, we like Holmes, we like uh, and Booker. <clears throat> Sarich is still very interesting, but he should draw a tough matchup with Porzingis, uh, which kind of takes me off of him. He's been really safe for the 30s, um, but tomorrow might be the fate of... I, I might fade Sarich tomorrow. Uh, moving on to the Knicks, <clears throat> uh, Kristaps Porzingis uh, played 38 minutes in his return against Detroit. Uh, makes him a very interesting and intriguing tournament play against Dario Saric slash Embiid, but probably mostly Saric. Um, he's a little bit too expensive for my liking, so I probably won't go there. Uh, I do like Jarrett Jack a significant amount, but I probably won't go there as well. He's very safe for his 20 points uh, the last three games. I think he's locked in for about 20. Um, I feel pretty comfortable with that, but probably not anywhere I'm going to go. And so that kind of eliminates um, the Knicks. So moving on to the Cavs, we've got everybody healthy on the Cavs. Uh, LeBron James priced at 11K. LeBron, the most expensive player on the slate. Uh, he, okay, he's 100. LeBron is 100 less than Harden, 100 more than Westbrook, and 500 more than Durant. Um, so this is this gets to the point where I finally look at some players that I really want to play. So Kevin Love. Um, I like it 7,500, but it looks like Draymond will play, so that really hurts Kevin Love, and it makes me love Draymond Green. Uh, so we'll get into that in just a second. So uh, LeBron at 11K, and then Kevin Love at 7,500. Other than that, um, probably the only guy that I would consider playing. I guess I would look at Jose Calderon. He's been playing some significant minutes into the 20s, and he's been pretty good for close to 20, which would be low value. Um tomorrow by my standards i want about 5.5 x to 6x uh, and so he would come close um the other guy is d wade comes in at 5k and if they're going to any time going to give him extra run uh to maybe hit 30 minutes it would be tomorrow on christmas um or against miami those are my two options it'd be if winnie plays miami or christmas um so i have a little bit of interest in d wade but still not anybody worthy of adding to the line so we finally get to it here. We've got the Warriors. Um, so starting off at guard, Curry's out. Clay is 6,400, which I really like. Um, and Iguodala is under uh, uh, is under 4K. He's at 3,900 and should have to play about 30 minutes guarding LeBron is my expectation. Uh, and so I will be playing Iggy. I know he had this dud against the Lakers, and it, it worries me, but Iggy, pretty a pretty consistent fantasy producer. Uh, and without Curry, with Curry out, he should handle the ball a little bit more. So let's go ahead and throw Iggy into the lineup. Uh, Draymond at 7,200 is going to crack my lineup as well. Um, he doesn't need to do too much to get to value at 35, uh, and he should be playing point forward. Uh, even with Livingston expected to return, um, I expect Draymond at 7,200 to perform well on his salary. Other than that, with everybody expected to be back except Curry... Um, I'll probably go ahead and, uh, fade the rest of the, um, uh, Warriors, except for possibly Durant. We'll come back to Durant, see where our cash lies. So this is the game I have the least interest in. Uh, we have the Wizards and the Celtics. So on the Wizards side, um, I really have interest in no one. Uh, John Wall is at 4K, or at 8K, um, and needs about, I was thinking about 4 uh, 40 points for 5x needs about 50 points uh to to hurt you and i just don't see him getting there um he was he's just been limited in minutes to the low 30s and that's where i expect him to be and i just don't see the upside at a low 30s uh minutes restriction i like bradley beal at 7k but there are other guys at 7k i like uh other than forcing people in this washington boston game on the Boston side, really no one I want to play. Kyrie's just a little too expensive, and um, I just don't feel like I, <laughs> I just don't want to play Al Horford. Um, I think he's fine, but if he gets you 20, if he even gets you 30, that's not going to get it done for you. Um, and if he play, he's going to play 27 minutes, 30 minutes, it's, he's probably not going to get there. So um, 
I'm just pretty much writing off the Washington Boston game. So we move on to Houston. I'm gonna take I'm gonna register Chris Paul out and I'm gonna assume Capella in. So Capella comes in at 6,600 but draws a tough matchup against Steven Adams. My preferred plays in this are Harden, Eric Gordon, and Tre Trevor Trevor Ariza and PJ Tucker. So Eric Gordon comes in at 5,600. Love this price on Eric Gordon. Needs about 33 to pay off for me. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking he'll get there. He needs a lot of points because he doesn't fill the stat sheet in other categories, but they should need his scoring in order to stay in this game. My assumption is Westbrook on Gordon, um, Roberson on Harden, PG on Ariza, and uh, it'll be... It'll be mellow on Anderson, but I'm not. It, I'm not playing Ryan Anderson. Um, so my other play in this, Trevor Ariza comes in at 5K, and look at the minutes he's played: 43, 45, 41, 42, 42, 34, 38, 30. His floor with Paul out is about 40. Um, and there, there's not much to say about Trevor Ariza other than he's pretty much consistent 25. I mean, look at that. It's, it's 23, 25, 24, 24, 24 and a half, 24, 25, 25 and a half, 28, 7, 5, 22. I'm just going to put Trevor Ariza in the line. Like, I'm just going to play Trevor Ariza probably. He's he's a nice value. It's not like he's overpriced. Um, P.J. Tucker is the one that I have. I'm, I'm having a hard time playing 4-7 for P.J. Tucker. I mean, he's playing minutes, but I find it extremely hard to believe he's going to get me to 26. Um, if he was just consistent in getting me 24, I would play him, but I am I'm not really sure he's going to be consistent enough to get me there, and nor do I think he's going to get enough minutes. Um, how long has Capella been out? I'll look at this real quick. So Capella has not played since Utah. So if you look at this, Capella hasn't played since Utah. And then you take a look at P.J. Tucker. He saw his minutes bump in the Milwaukee game, um, but his production really spiked in the Lakers game, and then he had a down game against the Clippers. But um, I don't know. 38 minutes against Milwaukee. I don't know why he played those 38 minutes against Milwaukee, but he's going to need a double-double in order to get it done for you. And in the two games without Capella, he got it done. But I'm, I think I'm going to stay away. I'm going to play Ariza, but I'm going to stay away from, from P.J. Tucker. So moving on, we have to talk about Clint Capella, who's 6,600. The issue is, is I'm assuming he will be on a minutes restriction. Um, it is a knee. It's a heel injury. Um, and that's kind of, I actually have a bad heel, uh, on my leg. And so I know firsthand, it's kind of a nagging that like his as is not as like, I have like a serious, <laughs> I have like serious surgery on my heel. Uh, but with heel injuries, you kind of have like a nag, like once the heel starts to hurt, you kind of adjust the rest of your body and it kind of nags on different parts of your body. Um, and so I, I'm assuming Capella will be on a minutes restriction, so I'm not going to go there. So moving on to the Thunder, pretty much just have interest in Westy. And if Steven Adams does not have a minutes limit, it looks like he is. I think I talk about this all the time. Like, oh, is Steven Adams going to have a minutes limit? Because he came back and the, but I, he's not on a minutes limit. And he's 5,500. He doesn't need an extreme amount to hit value. Uh, and so I will probably go ahead and play him even in a not elite matchup against Clint Capella. But I think I'm going to play Steven Adams. Give me some of the OKC exposure. Um, he's also below kind of where I want to pay. So another guy I'm looking at, uh, obviously, is Russell Westbrook. I don't really need to talk about the stars on this slate. I like them all. I like Harden. I like Westbrook. I like Duran. I like LeBron. Um, I'll probably hedge my lineups. I'll probably make a hedge lineup. Um, that I really love, and then hedge each of the stars, and then whichever one, because that would give me 30 um, of those $8 on one line, and then four of them on hedge lines with each of the superstars. So uh, the other guy that I really like is Andre Roberson. He should have to play into the 30 minutes. I, I know he's been down over the past few games, but I think he should have to play into the 30 minutes like like these games to combat James Harden um and if he posts me 16 even if he plays these little minutes and posts 
uh, 16 points from me. I'll be extremely happy with that. Uh, this could have been a pretty good game for him if he gets two more points and a rebound. He's posting around 25, so um, I'm, I'm thinking about, honestly, going to Andre Roberson. He had a pretty bad game against Utah, but um, I'm not going to hold that against him. Uh, so uh, we'll see how the build works, and then I'll circle back around to see what Andre Ro if Andre Roberson opens up anything for me or not. Let me go ahead and move Draymond uh, to power forward. That'll, let, that'll give us a little bit more flexibility. Okay, so back to Thunder. Paul George at 6,800 and Melo at 5,600 interest me in GPPs. Um, they don't really... Melo's been actually pretty decent over the last few games. He's, play, he's playing high minutes. This is a pace-up game for... This should be a pace-up game for the Thunder. Um, he doesn't need a whole ton to get there. He, he, needs to sh he needs some shots. He can't be shooting six shots like he did. But it's not like he needs an excessive amount to get there, so I do I do like Mello. Uh, we'll see how the build finishes out. Um, I was hoping to... I think if you ditch Draymond, you can probably get two studs in. But let me see here. Before, before we break this down, let me check something real quick. So, at point guard, if I play Harden... Oops, it's not what I wanted. Yeah, you can fit it. You can fit it. You can fit two studs in tomorrow. You could fit Harden. I, I prefer Durant. So, Harden, Dur Harden, Gordon, Durant, Adams. Probably just hedge this lineup with the different... I could just hedge this lineup with the different studs. Like, then I could jam Westbrook in and fit in two different value guys. So, if you fit in that, and then you come over here and you play like an Andre Roberson, who's 3,400... Go forward 3400. Andre Roberson, there we go. That gives you 5000 for your last spot, which is enough for a Dwayne Wade, a Julius Randle. Uh, we'll get into the Lakers because they have some value on them as well, but that's kind of an interesting little build there. Um, I'll tinker tonight, but let's get back into the Thunder breakdown. So it was almost enough to have Mello in there, but 5600 for Mello, not I don't think that's asking too much, and so I do. I do like that. Um, other than that, I'll probably pass it. So let's get on to Minnesota and the Lakers. Minnesota, probably the least appealing here. I do really like Jimmy Buckets. Uh, Butler coming in at 8,400. Not too excessive, uh, in my opinion, for Jimmy Butler. Uh, he has been a little bit... It's been a little bit weird with Jimmy Butler over the last four games. He's had some down games. He was like the model of consistency. Um, at like when he was like 7,400, he was like the model of consistency here, posting 40 point game after 40 point game. Um, he would need about 50 to make me like despise myself for not playing him. He would this 57 and a half would be the one where I would just hate myself for not playing him. Um, this 51 would be equally upsetting, but he's gonna need 30 ish points. He should draw KCP defense. Uh, which is not an easy defensive matchup, but it's not like an extreme one either. Um, so I, I have some general interest in him. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns has a really good matchup against the Lakers. Uh, should draw Andrew Bogut defense, which I'm not concerned about at all. Um, it might be, it might be a balanced lineup type of day with Cat and Butler uh, and a Draymond. Like, how much does that? Let's just see how much that leaves you. So if you go Butler, Towns, and Draymond, that leaves you still five thousand salary left. That's that's not that's a lot. That's a pretty good amount of salary remaining. Uh, it's just kind of a question of do you want like Harden and Westbrook and Andre Roberson, or do you want uh, Cat, Butler, and Draymond? That's kind of your thing. Um, so it, it's interesting. I could see Butler. I could see Durant only putting up fifty. And then, if that's the case, Butler becomes a better play because he's $2,000 cheaper. It's just a matter of kind of how lineup construction goes. I probably won't play double studs, is my thought. Which means Durant would probably get bumped out for Butler and then I could pay up for Draymond. Uh, so the ideal is probably, it's probably Harden, Butler... Uh, Draymond, that's probably what I'll end up with. Uh, so moving back to the to the Timberwolves, it's really Cat, and it's 
it's Butler and that's about it. Wiggins is 5,700. I guess I could, I could entertain the idea in GPPs, but he just hasn't shown a lot of upside with Butler there, so... Uh, probably won't go there. Jeff Teague, interesting, but I probably won't go there as well. Needs about f 40 for me to, like, regret not playing him. So moving on to the Lakers, big news is that Lonzo Ball out and Brandon Ingram is questionable. I would assume Josh Hart will start at point guard for Lonzo Ball. Um, they like bringing Jordan Clarkson off the bench, so I'm going to assume Josh Hart's going to get the start at 3,700. Uh, makes him... Very interesting. They really like Josh Hart. They've been playing him a lot. Should be... How many minutes did he play against Portland? He played 34 minutes. Man, they've been really... Yeah, with Lonzo out, I'm going to assume he's going to play. Uh, Jordan Clarkson should pick up a few extra minutes and a little bit of a boost. But I don't know if I want to play Jordan Clarkson. Like, I just don't... It's... It... See, this is going to be a tough choice tomorrow. If you don't play Jordan Clarkson and he goes off, you're just going to get burned into next year because I'll probably have to make a hedge Jordan Clarkson if I fade him. Uh, that's probably what he'll have to do. So if you fade Jordan Clarkson like I will, you'll probably have to just make a hedge uh, with Jordan Clarkson on it. So, But my preferred play is Josh Hart, $1,000 cheaper. I think he gets into the 30s of run. Uh, if Brandon Ingram's out, there's no doubt he gets 30 minutes into the run. Uh, Kuzma at 7,300. I really love Kuzma, but at 30, or at 7,300, it might be time to hop off the Kuzma train. Maybe it's not. He's probably safe for his 35. I mean, he's really seen the uptick in minutes. Um, yeah, I'll probably play Kuzma again with Bogut out, or with, not with, with Lopez out. Um, Andrew Bogut is just pissing me off. He plays, like, just enough minutes to be annoying, like, but he doesn't play enough to actually, like, be usable. I don't know why they just don't play Ivica Zubak, why they're playing, like, I, like, I don't get why they're playing Andrew Bogut over Zubak. Just play Zubak, play the young guy. Um, so I guess my plays on this is Josh Hart, Kyle Kuzma. I do love Randall at 55. Um... But I don't know if I want to just take the absolute possibility of an absolute dud at eight point at eight minutes. Uh, I doubt. I, I'm assuming he'll get into the twenties again. Um, not gonna play Larry Nance. Maybe we maybe we go with a Brandon Ingram if he plays. But I'll have to see if he's on a minutes restriction. If he's not on a minutes restriction, we're good. We're good. We'll roll with him because uh, he should see these type of minutes. Um, a, La a Lakers. A Lakers T Wolves late night hammer with Kuzma. Like, how much salary does this leave you? If you go Kuzma, Towns, Butler, Towns, Butler, Kuzma, Ingram. I mean, it's doable. It leaves you forty seven seven five left. That's that's a that's a do that's a doable. We can handle that. You can get Josh Hart in the stack as well. Throw him in there. It gives you fifty one thirty three. Ah, I'm going to hedge some of those $8, I think. Um, may end up playing like $28 in the, or 28, 28 or 25 of those entries in the $8 or something like that and uh, make some other tournament lineups with the rest. But guys, that's going to do it for the breakdown. Uh, hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. Hope you guys get to spend a lot of time with your family, watch some basketball tomorrow. Hopefully, maybe even watch basketball with your family. I don't know what I'll be, I, I, I hopefully, um, I know most of the people will not be into the basketball like I am, but hopefully I can get it on one of the TVs and uh, be able to keep up with my lineups. But guys, that's going to do it. Remember, Cleveland Golden State, Houston OKC, and Minnesota LA Lakers are my favorite. I don't have much interest in Philly, New York, and Washington, Boston unless we get injury news. And we're not going to get any injury news on any of these games probably except Philly, New York. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, play it a little bit safe tomorrow, remember. Obviously, we don't have late swap. And, guys, I will catch you guys on Tuesday to break down that slate. So, peace out.